Hi everyone, it's Nisha. Hang on, I have to do this. Dzień dobry i witam wszystkich moich polskich widzów z całego świata. <laughs> um, I just had to say this because um, I've noticed that I have more and more Polish subscribers, which is wonderful considering that I do all my videos in English. So I just wanted to say hello and welcome uh, to, to them. Right, I've got my old version of iMovie back, so hopefully this is gonna work. I was so upset. I was all set to do a video for you on Saturday or Sunday. But if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that uh, my husband has updated this um, our iMac and there was a new version of iMovie and iMovie is an editing program where I edit all my videos. And I know they say it's much easier, but maybe when you're 12 it's easier. At my age, I don't like change and I was really upset. I had to watch loads of videos on, on YouTube to see how to do it. Um, and I was slowly learning it, but it was, I just did not like it at all. So um, I posted on, on Instagram saying, I don't know when my next video is going to come out because I don't know how to do it anymore. And then uh, Jules, bless you. Uh, told me if you just go to your applications there is an old version of iMovie and you can still use it so that was amazing there's been some changes to iBooth um, photo booth and photo booth is what I video myself in um, and I don't like it much I think they've made it I don't know, more HD, which I suppose is good for all of you, but not so much for me. I think the old uh, photo both made me look a bit softer, but what can you do? Anyway, I am so happy to be back. Um, I've missed you all. I know I, I could only keep up with you through Instagram. Um, and Instagram is exclusively for my YouTube subscribers and for the YouTube community. Um, none of my friends or family, well, apart from my sister-in-law, uh, follow me on Instagram or know about it. I just wanted to separate it from Facebook. I don't really like Facebook much. I keep it for my family as I have family in Poland and I have family in Spain and in, in the US. I keep it for them so they can see pictures, stuff like that. And I didn't want to mix it with YouTube community. So my Facebook is nothing to do with YouTube, but my Instagram is everything to do with YouTube. So if you want to know what's going on in my life, and I always post pictures there and stuff, that's the place to see me. So as you know, I just come back from my two-week holiday in Turkey and I thought I'd tell you a bit about it. I just wanted to come come on here because I've missed you all um, and have a little chat and like catch up. So we went to Turkey, we flew to Antalya um, and we stayed on the Lara Beach Strip. Lara Beach is about 20 minutes away from Antalya airport. It's a long beach that has hotel next to a hotel next to a hotel it's it's a, like a resort uh, beach um, and we stayed in royal wings hotel all inclusive five star and i wasn't happy with the hotel at all so if you are gonna go to turkey don't stay in this hotel three years ago I stayed on Lara Beach as well, but we start, we stayed in Delphine Palace. There is three Delphine hotels. When I was there, there was another one called Delphine Diva, and they were building this amazing brand new one, Delphine Imperial, which is huge, and I saw it this time, it's all finished, looks wonderful. Um, anyway, I think Delphin Palace was amazing. It was a true five-star hotel, whereas Royal Wings to me wasn't. 
and thank God we went with our friends because I would go crazy otherwise. So let me tell you from the beginning. The hotel, the hotels in Turkey, the five-star hotels seem to be very luxurious, looked really opulent with big chandeliers and marble everywhere. But Royal Wings looked quite plain to me. So the first thing I walked in, I wasn't impressed, especially that it was one o'clock in the morning not amused at all. Rooms, you know, you cannot expect much from rooms in all-inclusive hotels. They're pretty standard, but they're very comfortable and very clean and have very good air conditioning. That's all you really need because you don't spend much time in your room. Unfortunately, in this hotel, the air conditioning was very good in a room, but nowhere else. Um, Anywhere in other public places like the bar, the lobby bar, the buffet restaurant, uh, there was a games room downstairs with pool table and stuff like that for kids. That wasn't air conditioned at all. We kept complaining and all they did said, we will speak to technical people, but nothing ever happened. So I think they were just trying to save money. The lifts, honestly, sometimes you got in a lift with 10 other people without any air, no air conditioning, nothing. So really, we were not happy about that. Second thing we were not happy about were the pillows. So if you're going to go to your Royal Wings, take your own pillow. I think it was actually disgusting for five-star hotel. They were thin and lumpy. Honestly, it felt like there were like cotton wool balls spread inside the pillowcase. Uh, when we went downstairs and asked, can we have some new pillows? They said, yeah, no problem. But they've sent us exactly the same pillows. And they don't speak very good English. Um, and I know it's a bit obnoxious expecting the whole world to speak English but it is international language and considering that half of the clientele in that hotel is English I think they should speak better English. Um, so it was quite hard to communicate. Anyway I won't go into detail but we had a huge battle about the pillows uh, we wanted to speak to management, there was never no one to speak to that could make decisions. Um, you had to, you could choose different pillows like orthopedic pillows, uh, goose feather pillows, but you had to pay for it. Three euros or something, six euros per night or something like that. And we said, I've paid a lot of money for five star hotel. I don't expect to be paying for pillows. You should have good pillows regardless. So anyway, we had this big battle for two days with them and in the end they gave us goose feather pillows free of charge. Um, so what I would say, the hotel was clean, the food was very good, food is always lovely, great choice in Turkey, air conditioning and customer service, rubbish. Um, you know, I understand there are problems in every hotel, but it's how you deal with them. And if we were dealt properly with, then I wouldn't have all these complaints. So anyway, if I went there again, I would definitely go back to Delphine Palace. It was a wonderful hotel. I just loved it. Anyway, what I'm thinking now is that I probably won't do all-inclusive holidays for a while. As much as I had a beautiful, a great break because I had, I had to do nothing, I used to get up, go for breakfast, then go to the beach, lie there till lunchtime, go for lunch, go back to the beach, stay there till about four o'clock, four, five o'clock, went back to the room, had a shower, put my makeup on, did my hair, got dressed and went to dinner, then we had a few drinks in a bar and go to bed. And we did that every day. And it is very repetitive and to some people might be boring. But to me, that's what holiday is all about. 
not doing anything. I didn't have to clean, I didn't have to cook, I didn't have to wash, I am none of that. And I don't know if I've been moaning to you before I went about all my aches and pains. I had sciatica in my uh, right um, back cheek and, and going down my leg. I had pain in my sternum, I had pain in my shoulder. All that went after about a week. So I had a really, really good break. Um, for the boys, so my friends have one son as well and his name is Max as well, and he's the same age as my Max, so it was wonderful for them both. Um, every hotel in Turkey, especially the five-star hotel, have like a mini water park in their grounds with, you know, the water slides and stuff like that, and this hotel, I must say, had a wonderful one. In fact, Delphine Palace doesn't have very good water slides, and it's not many, whereas this one had Lazy River, had a wave pool and few slides. I never went, obviously, in there because I don't get my head under the water. I swim like this. <laughs> That's another story. I have a bit of a um, fear of head under water. Anyway, um, so the boys would spend an hour, a few times a day, in that water park. There were all, also different activities like archery, air gun shooting, uh, stuff like that that they would do. But I think after a while it became a bit boring to them and you couldn't go and play football and do stuff like that because it was so hot. If you've seen I posted on Instagram I think the hottest day was 47 one day. That was towards the end so most of the days was um, 38 which is still very hot. Um, we would never stay by the pool because the pools were very warm. Uh, you felt like you were squashed like a sardine around the pool and there was no breeze so for me beach every time with nice breeze and and the sea was gorgeous. The sea is Mediterranean sea so it was still very warm but refreshing and really nice. So what was I talking about? about the boys yes so for them it became a bit repetitive and you know these days kids they want to be connected all the time and the wi-fi wasn't very good so they couldn't have wi-fi on a beach and uh, there was only wi-fi in certain places in the hotel which was free if you want and it was a bit slow if you wanted fast uh, wi-fi you had to pay for it of course um and there were certain spots in a hotel where they could get faster Wi-Fi, better Wi-Fi, whatever. So that's where they used to spend their evenings, sitting somewhere in a corridor, <laughs> um, getting Wi-Fi. And I think they don't like that, where they can't be connected. It's almost like wherever you go, is there Wi-Fi? Is there Wi-Fi? If there isn't Wi-Fi, you're going to die. Um, and I suppose that's, that's how... The life goes these days and technology and everything. Um, but I must say I liked it and that's why um, I haven't been answering your really your comments on Instagram because I would take pictures throughout the day or in the evening and then I could only post them when I was in my room because I could, got on my phone quite good Wi-Fi connection there. So I was just trying to keep in touch um, that way so you know and so you could see a few pictures and stuff like that so it was very hard so we did they had on a beach those um i don't know how to explain they were like big canvas canopies um that you could have your sunbeds and then you could just pull it out if you wanted to sunbathe and I tell you, it was only possible to lie in the sun probably half an hour at any given time because it was so hot. So I do have quite a good tan, I would say. Um, but I never went down on my chest. I was using SPF 50 and on my arms because that always gets me. My legs, I was using 30. My legs never get... get um, tan easily um, and on my face I had special number seven 
um, SPF, cream with SPF and anti-aging stuff that was 50. And if you see in my Instagram picture, I posted the uh, melasma, that I have melasma. Melasma is like a hyperpigmentation and usually it's like a mask on your cheeks. So I have it all the way here, here on my chin and my upper lip. It looks awful. So if you want to see it, you have to go to Instagram and I posted a picture there of me without makeup. It is quite hard to cover. And that just shows, you know, because people have been asking me, what do you do with that? There is nothing you can do. I think I started getting melasma when I was pregnant. And I think that's when you usually start. It's something to do with hormones. You know, when your um, nipples get darker when you're pregnant, it's something to do with hormones and the pigment in your skin. I don't know how it works, but that's when I first got my melasma and it gets worse with the sun. So in the winter, you can't really see it, it fades out. But if I'm in the sun, and not just like walking in the sun here, if I'm on holiday and spend a couple of weeks in the sun, and I don't have to just lie there with my face in the sun, but you in it every day, that's when it happens and it looks awful. It looks like I've got some disease. And it is very hard to cover. So it was a bit of a challenge Hang on, my rat is moving. Yeah, this was a godsend. Um, that's all I did every day. I've blow dried my hair a couple of times, but I couldn't be bothered. Just put my hair up, clip that in. And I know you always ask what it is. This is um, Glamorama hair piece from Dancing with the Stars. And mine is in Golden Wheat. Um, if if you want to see video about my hair pieces, I have it somewhere. You just have to go uh, to my channel and check the videos. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, about the the melasma. So it's like a hyperpigmentation, and I have been using the. Vitamin C, E and ferulic acid, which which protects you from the sun. I've been using very high SPF, but none of it is going to stop it. The best thing is to use higher SPF and stay out of the sun. Um, I think the vitamin C, E and ferulic and all that protects you from um, deeper damage in, into your skin. But what's happening on the surface of your skin, you can't help it. And I will now start doing my glycolic pills again. Hopefully that then that will go away quicker. And I know you could go and have a proper deep pill with the in dermatologist's office, but all these things do are making your skin even more sensitive to sun. So if you've had pills or anything like that, you have to stay out of the sun anyway. So unfortunately, you have to put up with it. Unless you stay out of the sun for the rest of your life, you will get that at some, obviously not everybody, people that suffer with melasma. Um, so like I said, it's very hard to cover. So I, I had a nightmare on holiday doing my makeup in the evening. So I took with me um, Estee Lauder Double Wear and, oh, what? What color was it? Tan, something tan. Soft tan. I don't know, but it's quite dark one, I thought, because I would be darker. You can't use any liquid foundations, really, unless you use something that, like, I don't know, like plaster that really, really covers you. But all it, if you put liquid foundation on it, all it does, it makes it look ashy and, and grey, it just looks awful. The only thing you can do is actually to make it browner. So I had to play with it, play with it, and it looked awful on holiday, I must say. I really didn't like it. In fact, I've decided I don't like my face tanned at all. I like to have a bit of colour because I don't like my face pale either. So I like it like I was before holidays. I had a bit of colour and I had a bit of bronzer and that's fine. This I don't like. I don't like myself with dark face. 
I like having tan everywhere else, but no makeup ever looks the same. I've noticed that the eye looks that I normally did didn't really look right with my tanned face. Lipsticks, I took so many lipsticks, none of them really looked okay with my tanned face. So I don't like it. I can't wait actually for my face to fade. Not my face, <laughs> the tan on my face to fade. So I found the best thing to do is to use, I have just bought this new thing which is Stila Stay All Day 10 in 1 HD Illuminating Body Balm SPF 30. <sighs> Very long name. Um, it ha it's supposed to have 10 benefits. Um, I've thrown the box away so I don't know what they are. But yeah, it's it's a it's good stuff and it's really nice so even though it says illuminating and it gives you that illuminating look supposed to keep you um, matte and it has quite good coverage oh god I've squeezed too much so there it is squeezed far too much I'm really annoyed um, but it is more like the Asian BBCC creams that don't actually give you color at first you see a color but then it's just more about evening out your complexion so I've been using that and I I really love it I might actually save it when I'm a bit paler and the the worst bits where I have here I was putting Rachel K CC cream I know this one is apparently they stopped making it there is some other one they're supposed to be the same one but just in different packaging so I would do that and that would sort of calm the darkness down. It doesn't really cover it, it sort of evens it out. I, it's hard to explain. And then, believe it or not, just the Laura Mercier Mineral Foundation in Rich Vanilla. I actually bought another one of those because I've run out. I like the Classic Beige as well, but when you have tan, and you put classic beige on, it's gonna make you look muddy. That's what I found anyway. This is a bit more yellow. So, so I've been using that and then you can still see the patches and that's where you have to start using bronzer. So I have been using the Bahama Mama from the balm, sort of here where my worst bits are. And then I've been using Laura Mercier, um, ritual this is discontinued but any nice i would say baked um bronzer works okay and then i put um blush and the blush that i was using the most was ilamasca sophie it just looked the best um on my tanned face um it is sort of peachy pink with a bit of gold shimmer um, I did take with me um, tart of the calf um, palette and I did use a couple of those brighter ones, the doll face, dolly, doll face, one of those, but this worked the best I found. Um, I used a couple of other things, but I've taken quite a lot of makeup even though I wasn't going to and when it came to putting it on, I found that nothing what I was doing so far was working. So um, I ended up in the evening mostly using that makeup. And that is from my Lorac Pro, the grey one, which is actually the very first time I've used it. I never used that one before. This is called Slate. So I sort of put it all over my mobile lid and blend it out a bit and then mauve in a crease and that's all I've, and obviously under here, and that's all I've been using if I wanted stronger makeup on holiday. Other than that, I would have just, like I just said, do my face and just mascara. Had a terrible problem with lipsticks. All my pale lipsticks looked awful. The only one that looked quite nice was the Revlon um, Lip Butter in Cupcake, which is my all-time favorite. Today, I have on 
the Estee Lauder Pure Color NV in 120 Desirable. So I have that on and on the top of it I have the Tanya Burr Gloss in First Date. I just honestly still with very dark face is so hard with makeup. Yeah, so that seemed to work the best on my melasma. I mean, you couldn't tell looking at me how bad it is, but honestly, if you see this picture on Instagram, it is really bad. It, I don't know, my, I'm laughing because my husband calls me Nutella face. Um, that I look like someone smeared me with Nutella. I must say that I've been back now for three days. It's calming down. I think it's the being constantly in the sun, you know, keeps it really there. But because we've come back, the weather is okay. Actually, it's quite a relief. It's, it's still about 20 degrees, a bit of rain, a bit of sunshine, but it's fine. I've had so much heat that I'm fine with it. So it is not looking as bad as it was in Turkey. So that's all I've been using really makeup wise. Well mostly I've been using nothing since we've come back because we we landed I think at midnight Thursday, Friday, Thursday. Mm, so we got home about two o'clock Friday morning, went to, straight to bed, did absolutely nothing woke up the next day and I was doing my laundry all day. Um, I had to do it over two days because on Friday I could only do stuff that I could put in a dryer because it was raining most of the day. So on Saturday the weather was nicer. I did the rest of my laundry so I could hang it outside and I ironed it all on Saturday as well. So on Sunday, I felt like I needed another holiday. Uh, my back ached and everything from, you know, bending and unpacking and doing all that stuff. But all of that is done now. It's Monday today. I've already worked. I have a bit more work to do. Um, I am happy to be back. I love coming home. So, providing that all this... Um, I movie stuff works okay. I should get this video out to you today. Um, what's in the future? I think I, I have to do empties video. I have huge box of empties. I might have to even split it to two. Um, so I'll probably do that. I have to start keeping up with my new nail channel. Um, oh yeah, my nails need really doing. I have don't know if you can see how huge the regrowth is on my nails. Um, so I have to redo those. I was actually very happy with this colour. This is um, IBD Jazz Gel in Ingenu. Ingenu? Ingenuine? Something like that. It hasn't faded out or anything because a lot of um, some gelish colours and shellac do fade out. In, in the sun, so this one was very good. Okay, so I think that's all for now. Um, I just thought I'd pop in and have a little chat um, and talk to you. And hopefully I see you very, very soon. Bye.